Hi, I'm Doug Jackson, and this is my 1974 Cessna 340 with the Robertson Stove Kit. Over 1,300 Cessna 340s were built from 1971 until production ended in 1984. When they first rolled off the assembly plant, you could pick one up for just around $200,000. Today, they range in price from $140,000 all the way up to half a million. Doug has completely refurbished this airplane, including paint, interior, and this amazing panel. Another unique feature to this aircraft is the Robertson Stole Kit, which replaces the split flaps with Fowler flaps, which greatly increases the takeoff performance for the airplane. So let's talk to Doug and learn more about his unique aircraft. I uh, got rid of my B36TC um, a few years ago. Guy just come along out of the blue wanting to buy it and my wife said, well, let's upgrade to something that we can travel in that uh, be a little bit, have more useful load, a little bit more weather capabilities. And, I'd always wanted a pressurized twin, but I didn't think there was anything that would operate off this 2300 foot grass runway. So I got on Beach Talk Aviation Forum and I got to asking some guys about, you know, what the what the choices were. And someone mentioned a, a 340 with an R-Stow kit on it, Robertson Stow kit on it. And uh, I, of course, never heard of it. And they're very, very rare. We know of about six or seven of these that are flying. I uh, contacted a guy up in Washington uh, State, uh, Skagit, Washington up there, and he's got one of these. Um, got to tell me about it. He said, basically, you can go anywhere that a 182 can go if you keep them light by light. I mean, you know, four or 500 pounds under gross. And uh, and he was right. I went up and uh, he actually gave me my initial training in this, in his airplane, one just like this one. And uh, I was just blown away, taking off six, 700 feet, landing in a thousand feet. We spent three days up there flying, flying out the San Juan Mount, uh, Islands and just had a blast. And, come back, found this one. It was a basket case. Uh, guy had just kind of treated it like an old truck. Uh, but it was, there wasn't one many to choose from. So over a period of a year, uh, we painted it, put interior avionics in it. Uh, engines were in good shape, didn't need any, anything but some accessories. And I've had it now flying for about three years. Uh, I've got about almost 500 hours in it. It's been to Baja, down in Mexico, Baja twice, uh, deep down in Mexico. Uh, Bahamas, everywhere. Of course, I use it a lot in my Operation Airdrop, uh, our charity. So so this is a straight 340. There, there was a 340 and 340A. This is a 340 uh, 1974 model. This one's been highly modified. It's got the Ram 6 engines, which are 335 horse the side. The uh, factory in plane came out with uh, 310 horse. Uh, IO 520s, these are 335. Uh, this one's got the Art Robertson Stole Kit, which is a uh, modified Fowler flaps instead of the f split flaps and it also has the VGs and the combination of all that raises the gross weight about 400 pounds and um, then of course uh, lowers the VMC install drastically I think somewhere 12 15 mile or knots so um, drastic change from the straight 340. Uh, if you're doing short field uh, the takeoff if you do the true Robertson stole takeoff uh, that's full flap takeoff 30 degrees. I don't do that very very often. Uh, it's You're right on the ragged edge of uh, VMC uh, but you are limited to all takeoffs and landings have to have a minimum of 10 degrees flaps in this airplane uh, to, hit, to reach the STC numbers. So every, every takeoff is at 10 degrees flaps. I usually rotate about 72 to 74 knots, lift off just shy of 80. Uh, and uh, then coming in on landing, uh, same thing, you come over the fence about 75, 80 knots. I've got an angle attack indicator in this airplane and uh, so I watch that more than anything for an on approach. Kind of takes all the guesswork out of it. Well, this field here is 2300, and it's uh, you know, it's not even a, a challenge. You know, you could go shorter, but I, I wouldn't go in much shorter than this because the problem is, if you were to lose an engine on takeoff, you're very marginal. Uh, 
Uh, this, this airplane, book numbers say that your accelerate stop distance in this thing is about 1,900 feet. It's probably a little bit optimistic, but it's, uh, it's close to that. This airplane likes a minimum of 16,000 uh, up to about 20, 21,000 feet. It does really well. Uh, if you fly it by the book numbers, round numbers, you're going to be burning close to 40 gallons an hour. I fly this plane lean a peak, uh, boost the manifold pressure. Book number is 23 inches of manifold pressure and uh, 2300 RPM. Uh, that's about 38, 39 gallons an hour. Uh, I fly this airplane lean a peak at about 33 and a half inches of manifold pressure, 2300 RPM, and I'm only burning about 29 or 30 gallons, 30 gallons in, the, in the winter time and about 29 in the, in the summer. It increases the range drastically. Gives me about another 250 knot, um, 250 nautical miles of range. And the, rate, the speed you can flat plan at, at those power settings, you can flat plan 190 knots, and it has an honest 1,000 nautical miles of range. Uh, interesting numbers on this airplane is 800 is, is the magic number. You can take 800 pounds, 800 miles. You can take 600 pounds, 1,000 miles, or you can take 1,000 pounds, 600 miles. So it just balances on at the, at the 800 number. Personal use now, uh, since I sold my business, I use it a lot in Operation Airdrop, as I said, and uh, in uh, flying cancer patients. I fly for a local charity here called Raquel's Wings for Flight and we take cancer patients down to Houston to MD Anderson for treatment. So Operation Airdrop uh, is a uh, organization me and some friends founded uh, about a year ago, or a year and a half ago, during the uh, uh, hurricanes down on the coast. And uh, it grew out of a little grassroots 10, 15 pilots up to now. We have about 900 pilots on our registry in uh, one of the largest general aviation disaster relief charities in the world. So the way Operation Airdrop works is uh, it's very simple. We're basically dispatchers. Uh, we locate and, uh, and acquire donated uh, supplies, whatever it might be, diapers, water, uh, food, uh, toiletries, whatever's needed, medications. And uh, we dispatch the pilots through a, a website and Facebook page and uh, we'll give them a pickup point. Uh, rally point like in Florida, we used Gainesville, Florida uh, during uh, the hurricanes up in North Carolina. We were based in Raleigh and uh, volunteers come in. We might have as many as 100, 150 people working the ground and uh, they will uh, catalog and, and weigh all the items. The pilots come in and we'll give them a destination to go to uh, and, and we, we always coordinate with the receiving end, ask them what they need and when they want it and we coordinate with them very closely. And then uh, our team goes in and uh, uh, catalogs all the items. Um, our, our command team, which is mostly composed of some of our board directors, uh, they make sure that the aircraft are loaded correctly and the pilots have all uh, know exactly what they're gonna be hauling, how much weight, and uh, they give us a form or we, have them, we give them a form to fill out and so we know what they can take. We are good for about the first five days. We're kind of a rapid strike. Uh, FEMA and, and the other organizations, they take a little bit longer to spool up and we can be gone and we can literally dispatch in a matter of a few hours. And uh, you know, if, the, if we, they call us today, we can be on site tomorrow delivering supplies. Typically during a hurricane, the roads will be down. There'll be uh, you know, a lot of course flooding, uh, power lines, whatever. And generally the, the General Aviation Airport is always open. Um, if it, it's not open the first day, it'll be open the second or third day. And so we can get in there into a, to a, a spot where no one else can get to with the trucks and, and get people supplies they need to get through the first three to five days. And that's, you know, when the, when the trucks can roll, then we're not needed anymore. So if anyone wants to, uh, to help, they can, uh, of course, we, can, we always need money. We're like any other organization that takes a lot of cash to run this thing. They can go to our Facebook page or our website, Operation Airdrop. Its website is operation-airdrop.com, and then the Facebook page is just Operation Airdrop. You can donate if you're a pilot and want to help. Uh, sign up to fly for us. It's a very simple, very simple form. Uh, then we always need ground, uh, ground volunteers. Well, I do want to mention that uh, Raquel's Wings for Flight up here in okay. Decatur because that's, a, that's something near, to, near and dear to my heart because I've lost a lot of friends to cancer. And uh, it was founded by Fabio Labrada, which owns the uh, FBO in Decatur. His mother died of breast cancer a few years ago, and he founded Raquel. Her, that was her name, Raquel. We fly, as I said, we fly patients down to MD Anderson for treatment, and it's very tough for them to get down there in a car especially after they have a treatment, just to ride home is brutal for them. And we can have them there an hour and a half. And we shuttle them from the, 
from Millionaire, it's the FBO that we use at Hobby, and uh, they loan us, very generous loan us a car, and we take the patient, drop them right off at the door, and then pick them up after their treatment. Raquel's Wings for Flight has a, a website and a Facebook page, and uh, as with any charity, donations are much appreciated. So on a 340, uh, some of them are known ice, the straight 340's not. And the only difference between known ice and not is uh, the inboard, or the main difference is the inboard uh, boots. I don't have those. But I do have the hot plate on the, on the windshield. It's got the heated props, and of course the boots on the wing and the boots on the tail, both vertical and horizontal on the tail. Pneumatic boots are pretty simple. Um, you have uh, air coming off of the off of the uh, vacuum pump, or in this case, it's a, a pressure pump. And uh, there's uh, channels in here. As you uh, as you build up ice on here, you allow it to get at least, they say, about a half an inch of ice. And then you flip a switch in there, and it blows this boot up. There's these channels will uh, will inflate, and pops the ice off the leading edge. And then, of course, on the on the prop, it's just heated, and you leave that on anytime you're below about 32 degrees. It's getting pretty popular now on even some of the single engine airplanes is to have VGs or vortex generators. And what these do is, is if you know anything about lift and aerodynamics, is when you have a stall, the angle at attack gets it at a certain point and uh, the air is not no longer attached, what they call the boundary layer, it's no longer attached to the wing and that air will, will break and, and uh, start rotating over the top of the wing. When it does that, you lose your lift. So what this does is it creates little vort vortices on the wing. It keeps that boundary layer attached at a higher angle of attack. And that lowers um, the, your uh, stall speed. In this particular airplane, about 15 knots, which is drastic. Uh, our approach speed drops from 90, 95 down into the low mid-70s. Everyone thinks of these tip tanks as being an uh, aux tank, but actually, they're in reality, they're the uh, main tank. They hold 50 gallons. And you've got, in this particular airplane, 31 and a half gallons in the aux tank, which is the wing tank. And then I happen to have another 18 and a half in a locker tank. So if you add all those up, that's 100 gallons per side for a total of 200 usable. Uh, what makes this plane unique, and if you ever walk up to a twin Cessna, just show somebody, impress someone, this, if you see this, that's a Robertson Stoke uh, mod. And what that does is they remove the split flaps, which would simply just hinge down and they add this, this flap system here, which gives it a Fowler flap. Your first 10 degrees, of you have two settings, 10 and 30 degrees. Your 10 degrees come straight out to about right here and down slightly. And that's all lift, uh, hardly no drag. Then from 10 to 30 for landing is this last three inches of travel right here. And that simply it comes out just a little bit further and down. And that's where you get all your drag. And uh, that's what gives you the really low VMC numbers. With the interview complete, it was time to pull the airplane out and go fly. We're good. Trim set. One, two, three. Pressurization set. And we're just waiting on oil to warm up. And so, you, I mean, yeah, if this thing was pretty rough, you did, I mean, this pretty much everything in here has been replaced, huh? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, cause, you know, uh, mechanically it was fine. It was just cosmetically. He just treated it like an old pickup. Flatbush traffic, twin system 512, Hotel Papa's back taxi in 35. So how does this thing handle the soft fields? Just fine. Yeah. We're about, today we're about 5,600 pounds, 50, uh, right at 5,800 pounds. So we're about 600 under gross. Gross is 6,400. So yeah. it, you know, does just fine. Did a quick run up here. This one's pretty good. It gives you a left mag out. Oh, nice. Right mag off.
Yeah, but the, but the modern, uh, you know, engine monitors and everything is so much nicer for the engines. Yeah. I mean, you can really lean them out and make them run well, and they you know, last longer. You can tell if you have a problem coming up. You can see up. a trend coming. Yeah. yeah. You can download this stuff. And if you got one cylinder that's consistently hotter, you know, I mean, either you got to work on some babbling, or maybe that cylinder's going yeah. bad. Yeah. I've got one problem. Number two over there just seems to always run warm. We've worked on baffling and everything. Just can't seem to get it. All right, so we're good to go. So what we're going to do is accelerate uh, uh, up to about 75 knots. We'll lift off. Uh, obviously, if we lose one before that, you know, we're going to have to hit the trees and take what we get. Uh, as soon as I get my hand off the gear lever, we're committed to flying at that point. So uh, here we go. All righty. Speeds alive. Engine look good. Our 60 knots, 70 knots, 75 knots. There she'll fly. Gear up. <laughs> there you go. Wow. That's pretty cool. There's your blue line. Flaps coming up. Man, you got your synthetic vision on there and everything, man, yeah. that's nice. Arrow country traffic, red, black, slow, on two, I mean, with the amount of information you have here now, it's just amazing. Yeah. Arrow country, yellow cab, one, two, five, Juliet, left down, one, three, five, arrow country. Is this his own private strip or uh -huh. okay? We should see his he's right down here. Is it a grass strip? Uh huh. Yeah, it's a grass real nice grass strip. He had some guys come in, excavate the thing and um right it right yep. there? Yeah, it's it right there. Caution. Terrain. Yeah, turn her off or she'll be bitching at us the whole time. That thing's 2,300 feet long. 2,300? <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. Looks short, doesn't it? Yeah. I'll just make a pass down. We might not land, but I told him I'd make a pass. So have you had to use this heated windshield before? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I've got some ice in this thing. It handles ice really well. Aero Country, Yellow Cub, 102 Papa Julia, Turn West, Crosswind, 35, Aero Country. So being down this low, 18 gallons a side, 18, yeah, so. Yeah, and I haven't even. Yeah, that's and not. I haven't even really leaned it any yet. It's still yeah, pretty that's, much full. That's not bad. Well, we're yeah, pull back 21 down inches down of maximum pressure. Yeah. Down one, you see that angle attack indicator up there? It'll start. Well, it's working right now, but we're just not pulling any. Oh yeah, you can see his little uh, the the power line things there. Yeah. That's got to be the hard part is getting over that and dropping. Yeah, yeah, it would be this thing. He built a really nice red hanger over there. Yeah. So. Yeah, I know the gear's up. <laughs> uh, this is fun. You do some fun flying. You and your uh, Badlands Traveler and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's this a lot of room in here. You could see how this would be a nice long cross-country airplane. Yeah, you know, there's not a... Uh, I mean, just the shoulder a, room. It's, you the know. difference in this thing in a, uh, a 414, 414, the earlier 414s anyway, have exactly the same engines, exactly the same wing and fuel system. They're just about four or five inches wider and a couple of feet longer. 
that's why this thing's so much, it's, this thing's significantly faster than a 414. Yeah. But 414 is a lot more traveling, you know, better traveling airplane, obviously. And then, of course, you get in 421 now, so it's a different animal. Yeah. But, uh, so that's a kind of a low power extended cruise setting right there, about 20. Yeah, a little more power on this. Uh, Bridgeport traffic 714 Charlie Uniform. About 28 Turn inches, 23. Touch and go, I don't know if you know much about Lena Peak. Yeah, um, yeah somewhat. Yeah, so, so we're on the we're on the lean side of Peak right there right now, uh, burning about 12 and a half gallons inside. 13. Yeah. And uh, just happy as a clam. Trainer speed 140 knots there. Uh, 140. Yeah, we're we're only true airspeed's only 140 right there, yeah. but we're you know we're so low and pulled yeah. way back. Yeah. But. Um, we go up to about 16,000, this thing really comes alive. You'd be 100, indicating 140 or so. Your true airspeed would be 190. Yeah. Um, push it forward a little bit. Got your XM weather and all that stuff. It's XM weather or two, it does all uh, that? No, that's just a, that's just a little cheap, uh, you know, that's oh. not permanently mounted because yeah. you can't permanently yeah. mount a car deal. So that's just in here, Velcroed in, and I've got uh, ADSB weather, of course. Yeah, right. So weather and traffic. This thing's pre-wired for a, a Garmin radar, but I never put it in. I, it's their twenty thousand bucks, and yeah. I just haven't. Report traffic. Uh, it'd be uh, nice, but I don't know that I use it that much. Yeah, that's the thing. If you were using this commercially, like flying somewhere, okay. But if yeah. you're just going for, you know, you just okay. If the weather's that bad, you might use radar. Wait. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Go somewhere else. Yeah. This, these airplanes, as good as they are, they're still a piston-engine airplane and. Flying this thing in real severe weather is just not the smartest thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. So your uh, first notch of flaps on this is 168 knots indicated. Uh, when you put it up, the plane balloons like crazy, so it's a lot of lift. Yeah. You're adding, I think it's like 18, 15 or 18 percent wow. to the wing area. Yeah. You know. And uh, then that, then that last notch, it really, it's all drag. Three five in valley. So I don't know if you see it yet, but there's the runway right down there. The house. Oh, yeah, okay. It's hard to see. Yeah. So who maintains the runway and uh, mowing it and all that? Uh, we have we hire a guy that does it. Uh, we have dues, you know, place for that. Sure. And they're real reasonable dues. Yeah. Let's get that first notch flaps down. <laughs> Yeah, that one doesn't look very long from up here. No, it doesn't. <laughs> We've had a MU-2s in here before. Have you? Yeah, I guess it looks about the same length as that other one. Yeah. They're supposed to be exactly the same length. Lake Dallas, Arrow Country. Rand 2, not 2, Papa Mike, is... Um, Three miles west of the air, east of the airport, we'll be crossing over midfield for a left downwind for three six, Lake Dallas. Aero Country, Yellow Code 102, Papa Julia, turn left cross wind three five, Aero Country. fun to come out here on the Badlands Traveler and fly up down the river looking for hogs. <laughs> yeah, I imagine so. I haven't seen any. seen some, lots of turkey and yeah. deer and stuff. I haven't seen hogs yet. I know they're out here, though. Well, it's getting pretty bad here from what I heard. Yeah, it is. All right. That last notch flaps. Flatbush traffic, 2625, 12 auto poppers, left downwind, 35, Flatbush. Arrow Country, Yellow Cup 102, Papa Juliet, left downwind, 3-5, touch and go, Arrow Country. Arrow hey, Country, traffic, 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 number 479, uniform, four, four miles to the north, we'll be entering left downwind for 3-5, we'll stop, Arrow Country. It's Betty there. That angle of attack indicator is pretty neat, so we're just coming oh, yeah. in, you see the donut. Yeah. We're looking for a full blue donut. We'll get that here pretty shortly. Getting slow.
gas on full tank on the carriage down, mixture prop. Good. Four 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 four